Sean Dustin spent time in federal and state prison for drug trafficking and fraud. Upon release in 2006, he had nothing but the clothes on his back, a bag of mail, and legal paperwork. In 2010, he kicked a longtime methamphetamine habit and started the long climb back up the ladder of life. This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast. If you want transparency and authenticity, you're in the right place. This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast, and this is Sean Dustin. This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast, and I'm your host, Sean Dustin. Today, I am talking with Chris Bentley, who is a real estate broker, and uh, here to talk today about uh, a couple of times in his life that he had uh, had to file bankruptcy uh, in his business and his line of work, and he's here to you know talk a little bit about what that was like and uh, maybe how to avoid that. Uh, in the future at some point, you know, if any of you out there are, you know, in that situation yourselves. Chris, what's up? What's going on? Thanks for having me on the show. Welcome. Thanks for uh, taking your time out of your day today. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, today's Friday and it's like, you know, we got closings and people asking stuff and it's, you know, the start of the weekend. So it's pretty nuts, but i um, happy to be on the show. Great, great. Uh, you, we were talking a little bit about, uh, you know, you, you two times uh, that you've uh, uh, had to go bankrupt. And this last time you were saying something about the uh, Google lead uh, company that, that was you were buying leads from just kind of like dried up. And uh, tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, any entrepreneur or any business owner uh, comes over some st- struggles or has to overcome something um i've had to overcome multiple ones uh most recently uh you know i declared bankruptcy at one point in my life and then uh that was towards uh or actually i guess like 2010 2009 uh when the financial financial crisis hit and then more recently about maybe about two years ago uh, I signed up for a lead program, online lead program, and uh, they got delisted from Google. And I had a long-term contract with them. I had no leads coming in. I still had to pay. Um, I was over $22,000 in debt. I was about to move into my newly leased BMW. Uh, it's just a total crazy, you know, like you got to uh, kind of live by, live on, what is it, like live, live with the sword or die by the sword or however that goes. It's kind of like that. Like, you know, you just... As a business owner, you, or at least for myself, uh, an entrepreneur, you have, I have really big eyes, you know, like I always, I'm always looking at bigger things. I'm looking at down the road, how, you know, how much is this going to make me if I, you know, this little bit, flip this, do different things. And uh, sometimes it doesn't work out. And when it doesn't work out, it's pretty painful. Yeah, I can imagine that. Where'd you go? I was like, where'd you go? Yeah, we froze up for a second there. Yeah, the whole thing just kind of disappeared, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm having issues with, uh, like, sometimes with my uh, my Wi-Fi here because my phone. Uh, so it's uh, coming up. Uh, it's my last payment uh, with Verizon on this phone. And uh, guess what? It's got issues. <laughs> imagine that yeah imagine that it's coming around on my last payment and now I, I things are happening with this phone that are going to cause me to have to go get a brand new phone uh coincidence uh, or not i don't know <laughs> yeah i'm like trying to like hold out i'm like knocking on wood that my phone doesn't do that because i'm at like the three-year period and that's usually when they like tank yeah hopefully this uh you know this that doesn't happen again and if it does uh you know we hopefully we, we you know we won't have to reschedule this damn thing uh but right. we'll just try to yeah let's try to let's try to you know get it where we get it so ex- explain that so the company that so as a broker you get leads you buy leads from from a, a company and those are there's like a lead generating company 
which kind of takes half of the work out of it for you as a broker. And you're just, you're, so basically you're just, you're, you're, you're being, you, you've got, uh, inst- you're, you're taking a step out of the, uh, out of the equation and now you're just a, a closer basically, right? Well, kind of, I mean, you, you have a different ways to get business. Uh, one of the biggest ways is, you know, like social circle and referrals, stuff like that. Well, the thing is like after you sold enough people, uh, and you don't have a big, strong referral business, you know, it's just sometimes like you just reach, uh, spots where it's just slow. So instead of just sitting on your hand, you're going to be like, okay, well, let me just go out and get some business. And then for myself, I have other agents under me. So it helps if I have a lot of business and then I can refer them or give them leads as well. So, um, it's just a matter of like, you know, just building a business. I mean, it's, it's the same thing for anything. If, you know, if like I, I dabble in, in Amazon, I have an Amazon store and, you know, one of my wholesalers refused to start selling uh, or st- actually stuff to me um, and to everybody because, you know, the company got wind of what was going on and they said they put the kibosh on it and that was that. So, you know, I had, you know, 30 to 40 to $60,000 uh, just kept ramping it up every single year of income coming through. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, it's a stop. So then you got to go find something else. It's just crazy, and you know that's kind of like the entrepreneur and the business owner, uh, you know, problem. Honestly, is like there's always a problem. You know, you're always a fire fighter, just out, you know, putting out fires. Yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine that. Uh, I, I, you know, I know that there's a lot of things that you can do with Amazon, like as a podcaster, you know, the, you have affiliate links and stuff that you can, you know, you can do through Amazon to try to generate some residual income through, you know, other different means. Like I have no idea about any of that. Uh, you know, it just seems so foreign to me. I mean, I'm just basically scratching the surface on what it is that, that, you know, I, I could be doing, uh, as a, a podcaster. And, and hosting a show and, and, and all of these other things. It's like, man, it's, a, it's enough for me to just get an episode out and, and do all of this. And there's all this other crap that goes on that I could be doing as well. So, I mean, I, I've got a long way to go. I mean, it's a learning process for sure. Well, I got started doing Amazon. Uh, a buddy of mine challenged me. You know, he was doing, I think, uh, when I met him, he was doing close to 90 and then the next year he did a hundred thousand in sales and then a year after that he did 150,000 in sales you know and me like I have a pretty big ego so uh he's telling me that he's like a hundred thousand I was like yeah okay dude like I sell luxury homes like no big deal you know and he's like no 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 dude like you should really see this and then he did 150,000 and we kind of like challenged each other and it was kind of cool uh, it was cool to you know, step up your game so what kind of an I mean like an Amazon store like when you go to Amazon right and you go on, I mean, uh, you don't see any separate stores on there. It's just all yeah. items, right? Well, like each person is able to have a storefront, what they call a storefront. And then you pack your storefront with whatever you want, like books, uh, you know, movies, uh, Nike apparel, whatever it is. That you have to get like ungated for each item. Um, and I can go down like a totally huge hole with this but yeah. the whole idea is to pack your storefront with uh, items and then when somebody goes to buy like this microphone that i bought um they'll pick it up off of either your store or if amazon has cornered that particular item through amazon or once amazon's done selling it then uh, it'll go to other sellers so um it's really cool for other stuff like uh you know, like I'm selling a bunch of Star Wars stuff right now. So, uh, you know, the collectibles are really cool. Uh, perishable items are really cool too, like consumables. Huh. Yeah, that's, that's a whole a whole world. I don't even whole, know about it. A whole other world, yeah. I don't even know. Like I'm just scratching the surface and I've been doing it for uh, two, three years now. Did you ever get involved in like any eBay things or uh, any of that kind of stuff? No, my buddy does some eBay. I uh, just... Because you know. to me, that's kind of the same thing, right? Just a, but different, you know. It's a little a, different, you yeah. know. It, it's uh, but it's along the same lines. Like everybody, you know, it was making a ton of money on eBay at one point, and you know, I knew a lot of people that were making a living off of eBay or sub or subsidizing their income a little bit with uh, with eBay. So, yeah, there's all kind. I mean, if you're willing to, I guess, uh, look 
a little further at things. I mean, there's opportunities everywhere. You know, you just gotta, oh, yeah. just gotta be willing to take the dive and and you know research it. And 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 I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. That's why I'm probably sure a lot of people just kind of shy away from it because one, you don't know, they don't know. Two, all right, this is it doesn't it doesn't seem like it's gonna be that easy, you know, and uh, it's gonna take a little bit of time and and research. And so well, you, you get all those three together, and it's like, eh, well, maybe not. Let's let's find something else. Let's find some lower hanging fruit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely not very glamorous at all. I mean, if you see like right behind me, I got like a big thing of bubble wrap. Like, it's not very glamorous. It's like, hey, what are you doing tonight? Well, like, I'm gonna stick some labels on stuff and then, you know, wrap it in bubble wrap and then call UPS and have them come by and like pick it up. And they're like, okay, cool. Like, we're gonna go to a bar and like watch the game. Like, <laughs> yeah. whenever you're done, whenever you're done, like being a dork, like, stuff like <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you're like, well, like me being a dork is like making me money. You know what I mean? So it's like a hard, a hard hard discussion especially when you're like trying to date girls with them i'm like oh, uh, what are you doing I'm like, oh, I'm sticking some labels on stuff I'm like you sure <laughs> <laughs> that was funny man i sorry sorry i laughed so hard but i mean i just you, it's like, true uh, oh, yeah, it is what it is yeah um so so anyway, let's let's get back to the the business part of that uh and and uh bankruptcy. So I mean, how long did it does it take like let's say you get bankrupt? I mean, I've thought about it before, you know, I've been in a situation where I was like, god damn, I'm, I'm in so much debt. How do I how do I get out of it? And you know, I did at, at some point um but it was uh you know, I had thought about it, but I was like, I don't know, I mean, how long does that actually stay on your credit report? I know a lot of people that have done it and it really hasn't affected them. You know, 2 years they were right back you know, right, right back in the saddle again, you know, their credit was fine. Uh, what, what is that process like to go through? Um, well, it's 10 years to get off your credit. Um, the process is like pretty painstaking. You have to go in front of a judge, uh, declare like they, I don't know, they made a change it now. It's been a little while, you know, it's off my credit now. So it's been over 10 years, but, um, you know, you sit in front of, in a, in, in the court and they, voice record you and you talk about you know why you're declaring bankruptcy and then um you have to disclose everything that you own as inventory and then it's up to them to decide if they're going to seize that stuff to pay off debitors uh or it's just it's such a mess and then you know like for me i had to like you know, any sort of money that I had, I had to like hide it or I had to like, you know, put it under my mattress or say that it's taken from something. I mean, it's, it's a big ordeal. You have no credit, your credit shot. So then you have to get uh, credit cards that have like a hundred or two hundred dollar balance. And then they charge you every single month, like 20 bucks to have the credit card open so you get credit. Uh, it's just an ordeal. I mean, it's just, it's not very fun. Like you can't show any income or if, or if the income that you do show, then it can go towards uh, paying people that you owe. So it, it could be like quite a mess. Huh? Yeah. I, I, somebody was saying, she, uh, cause I think I was like 20 or no, I was like maybe 15,000 in debt. And somebody goes, nah, don't even, don't even bother for that. Yeah. Like figure out, figure out the, the amount of pain it's going to cost you, uh, for that little of an amount, figure out a way to get it paid off. Well, uh, mine was during the financial crisis. So I had two rental properties, like a bunch of overhead and I had a, I had an office with people. So I had like leads I had all kinds of different stuff. And I was like, man, this is terrible. So it was easily, I think I, at the end of the day, I think I, clo- I think it was close to a million. Oh, wow. Or not more. Yeah. That was so a lot. I, I hit the home run on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my little, my little 15 is just a small, small. <laughs> a couple of zeros less. Right? Yeah. Um, so, like, what are you what are you doing now? Uh, are you still are you still uh, selling homes, uh, doing uh, luxury home sales, and and stuff like that? And by the way, what what area are you in? I'm in Dallas. Uh, I live in the Plano area, so North Dallas. Um, I get a lot. Yeah, of- I have my brokerage show. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was, I was, no, go ahead. I, was, I get a lot of, uh, a lot of guests have been from, uh, Austin, Dallas, uh, the Texas area. I, I, I don't know yeah, why. Yeah. Well, people are moving here. I mean, there's no state taxes. Things are cheap. I don't know how, for how, for how long. I mean, but, uh, yeah, there's no taxes. Things are cheaper. People are nice. Um, 
you know, it's just a different world. I grew up on the East Coast. I grew up in the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area. So uh, it's like total night and day. Um, and then I work with a lot of people that relocate here in the Plano Frisco area because um, a lot of big corporations are moving here for the tax benefit. So they relocate for their job. And then, you know, it's like trying to explain somebody in California what it's like to be in, uh, in Texas is like a, quite the conversation. So, um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. I have the brokerage. I set that up uh, turnkey in late January. So we're, we're going on a couple months now. I have Parker Prescott, which is my capital management company. So I manage people's money as a registered investment advisor. Um, and then of course I have the Amazon store and that's just a, a fun thing I have. Yeah, it's a, what is that residual income? Is that what they call that? Or you just kind of uh, like... Amazon for Amazon? It's just like it's just me and my buddy just trying yeah. to out out flip each other. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, that's pretty cool though. I mean, I, I'm I'll, maybe I'm maybe I'm going to look into something like that. Uh, with that, what, what all that what all that entails? Although I think when I go back to work, I'm not going to have all of that time uh, to do that. It's definitely a time uh, consuming for sure. And this is this what I'm doing here is pretty damn time kind time consuming in itself. So, uh, but I enjoy doing it. So that's part that's of. Cool. I mean, you know, it's it's really not like working for me. I mean, you ever you ever do one of those things where it's like you could spend hours at it and it like doesn't feel like work? Yeah, I mean that's everything I do is that that way. Like I trade stocks. I'm like I can do this all day. You know, like selling is fun because it's a challenge. So. Um, and I've always, you know, been a salesperson or entrepreneur, business owner since I was like a kid. Like I was like, the kid that was like knocking on people's doors, asking if I could shovel their walk when it snowed and wash their car when it was summertime, and you know, sold uh, lollipops and stuff at at school. So yeah, I was just that kid. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, I, you know, there's, I know a lot of I know a lot of guys like that. Um. So tell me a little bit more about, uh, uh, well, one thing I see that we have in common, uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah. I just, uh, Elon Musk, uh, just did his second interview with him, but I've been watching a lot of, uh, Joe recently. Uh, he's got some really, really, really awesome guests. Yeah. One that really, uh, I can't remember who it was, but I actually took a clip of it and put it on one of my shows. Uh, nice. and it was the guy that, uh, he was talking to that told, that was telling everybody that we should revolt. Um, it was an older gentleman. Ah, oh, man, I can't remember what his name is. It's huh. going to really bug me. Uh, it's, uh, it was one of the more recent episodes, but uh, it'll come back to me. Uh, Gary V. I know that name. Uh, but I don't know who it is, but I know he's a very popular person somewhere in the podcasting world or, uh, just wherever his space is, he's like number one in it. Yeah. Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, I've watched him for, man, some really dark times, probably like last five, maybe seven years, man, five years, probably. Um, uh, just watched him, you know, like he's a. I like his old stuff. I don't watch his new stuff as much. Uh, it's pretty much the same story over and over again, but um, I'd love to meet him at some point. But, yeah, it's just a lot of good ownership stuff, especially when he was building out uh, VaynerMedia uh, when he had the old office. He would talk, talk about business and, like, being a business owner and, like, you know, losing deals and trying to get deals and uh, stuff doesn't work and, you know, having to fire people and people quitting, you know, just – trying to run a business and that was a real uh real cool thing uh and i used to watch him like pretty adamantly uh, just in those conversations you learn a lot um if you look at like the ask gary v like shows i think like one through a hundred i mean there's a lot of good stuff right there yeah let's check it out uh there was there's one uh somebody who i'm supposed to be a guest on their show i guess their last one of their interviews they actually got like five minutes with him uh to interview him on his podcast on their his podcast so uh i was like huh yeah i'll have to I'll have to check that guy out uh, has he been on yeah. joe rogan or no yeah he's been on joe rogan has he mm -hmm. yeah and his and like some of his earlier stuff yeah, his earlier stuff. Okay, yeah, I think I've, I've I've started like two, maybe three years ago now. So I mean, there's he's he's been around for like seven years or ten years, right? Fifteen years. I don't know. I mean, he started. He came out talking about stuff. I would say probably the last five to seven years. Um, the last couple of years have just been like 
man, just a watershed. I mean, he, he posts like three things every day, like every three hours, you know, it's just like, yeah, I just can't handle it sometimes. I mean, a lot of it's the same thing. Like once you watch a lot of it, you're going to be like, okay, it's the same yeah, information yeah. over and over again. But the newer, uh, the older stuff is a lot of like really good stuff for business owners, entrepreneurs. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff about like, you know, sitting around and like, uh, you know, complaining and then not doing anything is like on you. You know, you don't have any, like you need to just stop complaining. Like Mindset. if you want to do something, you like, you know, go study. Mindset stuff, you know, your your yeah. your, your basic run of the mill uh, uh, personal development one hundred and one. Uh, when you get into this space, I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, like, when you get into this space, uh, there's there's keywords just like there's there's keywords in uh, 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 like the green movement, like sustainability is a word that comes up quite often in in the green movement. You know, everything else sustainable, sustainability, sustain. You know, and the personal development space is kind of like that too you've got some of these you yeah. know key words that people like always you know it, the media as soon as you say that word it's like oh oh personal development self-improvement uh you know so i don't know where i, I think was it's i think it's the same thing with hip-hop right now actually like somebody will say something kind of cool and then i'm not a huge fan of hip-hop but i like somebody will say something kind of cool and then everybody will be like oh that's cool too and then they'll kind of mix it in their lyrics and then they'll be like oh i, I said it first yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever dude you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh so what 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 else, what else do we got here man um tell me a little bit about living in texas if for you know I, I i hear rogan talk about it but when he talks about it he says texas is its own country it's got more more captive tigers in the world than than uh than than the rest of the world in texas <laughs> Uh, it's its own country, honestly. Um, 45 minutes from here is Fort Worth, and that's a whole nother world. And the only thing I can kind of compare it to is uh, where I grew up, which was Chevy Chase, Maryland versus like Baltimore. Um, you know, Fort Worth is like the the 10 gallon hats and the horses and like everything moves slow and y'all and reckon and like over here is, uh, you know, just... A little, more, a little more east coast um moves a little quicker and people are um you know they're still nice to each other but it's just different um there's no like 10 gallon hats and horses uh thank goodness but uh that's really not my my thing i'm a city kid but uh yeah it's just different uh people here are real nice it's a little slower paced than the east coast uh you can kind of slide by you know doing something you know, chasing an entrepreneurial dream versus, you know, when I was growing up in the East Coast, you had to have like two jobs just to like get a small little dinky apartment the size of a closet. Um, it's just different, you know, people are different, um, you know, just all the way around different. I heard uh, Austin is, is the closest thing that you'll get there to California. Yeah, Austin is definitely like different from Dallas. Um you know, it's just a different vibe down there. Uh, now that, you know, a lot of like tech companies have moved down there, it's more tech friendly and like a younger vibe. Um, but that's also brought a lot of like, uh, the West coast vibe to it too. Liberalism. So it's just, yeah. And like, it just, <laughs> you know, it's just different. Like for a really good example is like, there's no meters here for like parking. Uh, there's a couple like in downtown, down, down, downtown Dallas, but there's nothing here in like Austin. That's all they have. And like East coast, that's all they have. And like, you know, I don't even have change in my car, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and the East coast, I had to like, you know, I felt like Kramer, like walking out when I read to go park somewhere. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh what what about the housing and what about you know the housing prices there uh so like i've thought about i thought about you know moving to texas and getting out of here and you know i know my 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 daughter's mom you know doesn't really like california the you know she doesn't really have anything keeping her here except me um because of our daughter we co-parent right uh, and so I was like, I'm thinking, well, man, I, I wonder, where, you know, maybe we can move to Texas. You know, I, I can move wherever I want. You could, you see what I, what I'm living in. Uh, right. I, I can just, I can just roll this thing up and, and go wherever. And it doesn't matter. Uh, mobile or mo, mobile 
and uh you know off the grid uh you know that's a command center <laughs> right oh you know what i, I, think I just had the, the remember uh meet the fockers <laughs> yeah. remember how he had that bed that slid under and in, in his little thing and went down into his little uh, little command center <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what, like, what, what are the housing, uh, like what's real estate like there? I'm a, I'm a licensed drone pilot. Uh, I do area of, uh, real estate photography or aerial photography, uh, as a, like a side gig. Um, cool. you know, I, I, you know, the, some people are using it. Uh, it's gone. A lot of it has gone to app based, uh, uh, deals. Right. But also, you know, uh, that's becoming a real popular thing now with Amazon and uh, UPS and delivering medicines. Now I've, I've been seeing that drone uh, UAV operators are becoming quite a pop, quite popular, you know, anywhere from 60 to, to, uh, you know, 90,000 is starting. Uh, wow. Yeah. So I'm like, Hmm, maybe I should, yeah. uh, go and, f- you know, figure out how to fly my, fly my drone for a living and, uh, you know, chill out for a while. That'd be cool. Yeah. I got some friends that, uh, do drones, but, uh, bigger stuff, um, stuff for like the smaller stuff is mostly for like housing. If they're going to do that, then they do it with photos as well. So they'll do the aerial drones and then also do photo shoots for the listings. Yeah, well, I tried to do the photo thing uh, myself, so I was like, well, you know, if because I, I had this business, and I'm like, well, if I'm going to do this, then I might as well do that. Although I don't know shit about being a photographer, like I didn't know anything about uh, you know the lighting and you know all of the, the the things that go along with being a photographer because that's a profession unto itself. There's a lot of things that yeah. you need to know about equipment, uh, you know, lighting, how to how to how to do all these other things. And uh, I, I got myself into a situation where I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I can do that and i couldn't figure out how to uh how to do something and it and and my pull my covers got pulled right the client was like well do you even know how to be a photographer and i'm like uh no (laughs) it just seemed like the thing to do right you know if i'm gonna do one i might as well get the money for the other uh so yeah, you know, I've I've gone through a couple of things like that in my life uh, where you know I've I've tried to act like I know how to do something, and then you know when when push come to shove, it's like oh man. So needless to say, I don't offer those services anymore. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one with big eyes, so that's good. Well, I mean, you know, if you don't try, you know what? What are you gonna? Yeah, you know, you don't know. So, yeah. um, well, the housing market here is pretty wild. Uh, this week has been kind of weird, but uh, just because the COVID stuff has been uh, kind of nuts, like people want to go out and see stuff. And then I've had either two different types of people, either they come out and they're like looking like they're about to jump into surgery. You know, they got like masks and gloves and like scrubs on and I'm like, oh my God. And then I've, you know, they got to leave like all the, I got to leave all the doors open for them. And then uh, I've had the opposite, which is like me and you just hanging out, like, let's go look at some houses, right? Yeah. Um, so I've had that. And I've also done a lot of like virtual tours uh, for people that are like on the uh, West Coast. So uh, I did one on the East Coast as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a weird time. Uh, right now, there isn't much inventory. And now more inventory is coming on the market. Some more people want to go see stuff. Um, and I have a feeling like a lot of people that are seeing stuff are just kind of bored. And I'm like, are you guys really interested in seeing a house or are you just guys are just like, you know, you're not interested in buying anything. You just like need to get out of the house. And this was like the easiest outlet and it's free. You yeah. Know, so yeah. Like, which one are you guys doing? You know? So, uh, that's been the hardest part, especially with virtual tours. Uh, I can't see them. I don't know what they're doing. Like they're probably sitting on their couch or in front of their computer. Like I have no idea if they're really interested. They're just kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like turn left, turn right. Was that a bedroom? How big is that closet? You know, I'm just like, oh my god, man. Like, are you really gonna buy this thing, or like, am I just walking yeah. around? Yeah, you're you're walking around with a tape measure, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just walking around with like a selfie stick and a in my phone. I'm like, come on, guys. Like, what do you think of the house? And they're like, oh, I don't know. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, so if I wanted to, like, I'm a first time home buyer, right? Never bought a house before, and let's just say I have, you know, forty grand to put down on it. What is there? You know, I hear that doesn't get you much in California. You no. know, that, 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 you know, you might you might get yourself a, a condo, maybe. Uh, depending on where you're at, you, know, you can get a, you can get a house, but I mean, you ain't gonna have a whole lot left over to to put anything in it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can get you a really nice house for three hundred fifty thousand. Uh, houses here, like you know, decent ones, like two fifty as a starter. Uh, it goes down from there, and then of course the quality goes down as well. But uh, and the location, you know, of course. But um, I mean, there's still houses that are one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand. Um, just the neighborhood might not be that great. Uh, I don't think we have like a ton of really bad neighborhoods because, you know, we're, we all carry guns here. It's legal to carry guns and we can openly carry. So, um, you know, people kind of mind their own business and leave you alone for the most part. Yeah. That, uh, that, that, that definitely helps to put a smile on a face. Yeah. Hey, don't, no worries. (laughs) (laughs) It's all good. Move up. Move along, please. Thanks. <laughs> Don't make me pull my gut out. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I I know that. Uh, wow, where was I at? That was like that. Um, Phoenix, Arizona was like that. Uh, uh, yeah, Arizona's yeah. A, a right to carry state, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was same same thing. It was you know everybody was kind of like you know mm-hmm. you didn't have too many uh, road rage in- incidences. Uh, <laughs> well. Is there uh, anything out? We're about thirty minutes right now. We can we can try to figure out uh, fifteen minutes worth, or uh, you know, if you got anything else that you want to uh, talk about. Yeah, I mean, I could just kind of talk about some entrepreneurial stuff that I found out. Um, and Gary V talks about patience a lot, and like I, I second that. Um, I was doing uh, I was doing financial services, uh, so the market tanked. And back into financial services, I was in when I first was selling life insurance and annuities, and I was licensed for uh, mutual funds. And then, uh, you know, it was at that time, you know, it was 2006, seven. Uh, I was selling a lot of houses because it was like the, the peak of real estate. You know, you could buy a house with nothing down. There was like, you know, you can just fake assets. So you can do uh, no income, no asset loans. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, <laughs> credit scores down to like 500 you know just crazy stuff and i was just getting people like i would just go out on the street and like hand out a flyer like you want to buy a house and people were like sure you know like who doesn't want to buy a house yeah, yeah. um and then you know so I, I stopped doing it and then i got back into it after the collapse and uh, after i was bankrupt um and i would just sit there and see like other people like just crushing it you know and i'd sit back and be like man like i only closed like one or two deals and made like a couple hundred bucks um and i just quit i was like well i'm never gonna chase them i'm not gonna beat them whatever and i just quit and i went home like you know home back in maryland i went back and i found like an old spreadsheet of all the sales that i did and every week I would close like, you know, like four or five hundred dollars for the sales. I kind of like that was my average. And I was comparing myself with everybody that was at the office. I was like making way more. And I was like, man, I'm so silly and like I'm so dumb. Like if I just continued doing it, like that's an easy four hundred bucks a week. If I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it, I probably would have caught up to them or at least like gotten close to them. And like I just gave up too soon. I wasn't patient. And like, I just a real shame, you know, like I just kind of look back at it and I was like, man, like if I had just done that, uh, where would I have been? Like what lessons would I have learned? How things would have been different, you know? And you never really know. Like that's uh Dan Blazarian brought up something the other day on Joe Rogan show. It's at the very, very end. And I watched it. It's a story of the Chinese farmer and, uh, it goes, and it's going to be kind of off because I watched it once or twice, but, um, uh, what happens is uh, like there's a ch- you know a small village in China and uh, the horse gets loose and runs away and the neighbors come in and like you know that's that's so terrible and the farmer goes maybe and then you know seven horses or thirteen horses come back and and they're like we're, we're so happy for you and he's like maybe and then his son's trying to like ride one of them and breaks his le- falls and breaks his leg and then the, all the neighbors say oh that's terrible and he says maybe and the whole idea is that you never really know uh 
based off of that event, what's going to be right behind it? Is it going to be something great? Is it going to be something par- uh, terrible? You just don't know. And like, you can just, you know, it was a really, really good story. Uh, it's at the very end of the Joe Rogan, Dan Blazarian uh, episode. Um, but yeah, it kind of hit home for me. Cause I was like, man, there's been so many things that I've done. Uh, like I gave up or quit and it was like so stupid, but at the end I was like, maybe that's, you know, all that got me to where I am now where, you know, sitting over here and you know, running a brokerage and doing my thing. So it's just kind of cool. Well, I think that, I think, I think that same uh, can apply to anything uh, that you're doing, right? You know, a lot of times, you know, whether it's a diet that you're on and, and you're, you're, you know, you're not seeing results and what ends up happening when we don't see results, we stop. It's like, well, why, why should I keep going? And nothing's changing. I want to eat that. I want to eat that hamburger, you know? And so, you you know, you go off your, your diet and you go off track and, you know, you, you didn't, you didn't stay the course long enough for, for you to be able to see what you needed to see to continue the, the journey, right? That can happen there. That can happen in podcasting. I mean, pod, it's a perfect example. I mean, you're, you know, you're, it, it's a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint for sure. You don't see, you don't see the fruits of your labor for a long time. If, if at all, you know, you may get a glimpse here and there of somebody saying, Hey, yeah, I, you reached me. Uh, you know, I love what you're doing, but I mean, you know, you're not, you're not seeing those results, right? Uh, you know, other than the, the, the numbers that you're getting, the, the analytics and even those are slow growing, right? unless you're a popular person and you know if you started from scratch like me it doesn't you know it's not it's not going to happen overnight um and so yeah you, you have to stay the course you, they talk about this in the uh in uh, uh the programs like na and aa don't don't leave before the miracle right yeah yeah and, and you know you don't know when that's going to happen you know but don't leave before it because you, you're going to sell yourself short and and we don't know what's ever going to happen i mean things change so fast rapidly so quickly in in a matter of moments minutes sometimes you know you could be thinking that life's you know down you're down and out and things aren't 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 going to go your way and and what am i going to do and the moment your mindset changes right it, it it allows you to not get out of the situation but to see the situation differently and just that mind shift and, and perce- uh, perception shift in itself of how you're actually looking at that problem, you know, may, may actually, you know, be what you needed to see how you were going to get through it. Yeah. I mean, that's how I think about like, uh, you know, the bankruptcy and especially the most recent one where like everything kind of fell apart. Like I could have easily been like, you know what, screw it. Like I'll just like go work some, you know, terrible job and like go, you know, do whatever I got to do and, you know, pay back to $22,000 and then like, you know, continue my crappy job and, you know, just, you know, hang it up. And, you know, back in the day, probably as a kid, I probably would have done that. But this time I was like, Nope, not going to happen, man. I'm just going to keep pushing through it, whatever. Like, you know, so yeah, look where, look where I'm at, you know? Yeah. There it's is, crazy. there is, there is one question I want to ask you that I just, it, sure. it, 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 and it has to do with, uh, 2008 and all of the things that you were, you were talking about. You experienced it. You, you saw how, you know, 5 million p- families lost their houses, uh, and, and the banks, we bailed them out and you made them richer and they consolidated the wealth, uh, I, I, a, a, a little, a bit, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, of, of the, of the one and a half percent. Uh, and I, I was, I was hearing some things up here where they were, some companies were, were trying to exploit it in a different way because I know they did put some, uh, some different things in place to where that couldn't happen again. But I mean, it was really how they were just sort of repackaging, uh, loans and hedging and hedging leverage on. Like it, it was, it was a lot like, uh, all right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet that you're going to lose on, you know what I mean? It, 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 these tranches in these securities and, 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 you know, triple A, double A, uh, securities and, and stuff like that. They were all being repackaged into a different, uh, something else that made it look like it's something that it wasn't. Right. And so I, I know some people in, in an area over here that's kind of affluent and what they were doing is they were, uh, uh, selling, uh, uh, mortgage, uh, oh man, what, what do you, when you, uh, when you take a, a, a second out on your house for home improvement loan, you, an equity line of credit. yeah, an, an equity line of credit. So they would sell these people on an equity line of credit and instead of them 
doing the upgrades to their home that they were supposed to do. They went out and, and spent it on boats and, and other things. And as soon as the market started to go down a little bit, they called those loans in and reappraised. Uh, they wanted to reappraise the, uh, the, the value of the home of what you just did. And, and they found out that, oh, well, you didn't do any of that. So now you're, you're, you're upside down in this, you know, what you were supposed to do to bring up the value of your home. You didn't do, you went and bought all these silly, toys instead and now your home is not worth what we gave you the money or, or something around the I, i'm not really really uh versed in in this in this line of <laughs> work but and, and what ended up happening is like a, a bunch of these houses they had to file for uh they foreclosed on them because they couldn't afford to come up with the money to uh to pay yeah. back uh to to be i guess what right side up in this loan now yeah. is that how it works yeah, they had negative negative equity, so they spent that money that they had as the equity line of credit, and then, you know, they just banks are banks are crazy, man. They'll they'll call that money back. So, um, and that's exactly what they did. And then, you know, they had to come up with the money, they didn't have it, and you know, they had to sell the house. So, uh, banks are banks are for profit. They're not they're not there to help you out. So, I think a lot of people get confused with that. Um, but yeah, banks are not there to help you out at all. I mean, they're there to take your money and use it to, for their own gain. And I definitely did it on that one. Yeah, well, they need you to be dumb, right? It's to their benefit for you to not be knowledgeable on what it is that you're doing, right? Yeah, I mean, their whole thing is like, please give us your money so we can, you know, use that as leverage to go do what we want to do, which is, you know, buy assets and buy land and different stuff that they do. And, you know, whenever you want the money back, then they have to use it from somebody else it's just a big you know for banks it's just a big kind of like ponzi scheme well it, it, take other people's money and just give it back to you you know it's just weird it's a weird thing but yeah, yeah. Well, and, yeah, and another thing that's that's going on right now uh and i and i experienced this and they didn't tell me this and i i'm i'm not educated enough in it to even to know to ask and and then they didn't tell me when i did so i was like all right well i'm going to defer my payments for my 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 truck and my my trailer for two months uh you know f f while we're going through this thing because i wasn't working i could have paid it uh i just i chose not to i'm like ah, well let's, let's let's do this but if they would have told me that i was going to have to pay the interest still like yeah well we'll defer it to the end but but by the way you're still going to get charged uh you know four hundred dollars interest uh, per month so no, it's going to cost you eight hundred dollars to do this if they would have told me that up front i would have said oh whoa whoa wait no 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 i'm, I'm good I'm, I'm cool i'll i'll just pay it don't worry about it uh you know what what where, where's the relief um I, that's the part uh, that yeah the uh, where, where's the help who are you helping you're not helping anybody you're helping yourselves oh yeah uh well what, they're helping their investors and that's the whole idea it's like their investors get paid yeah and that's why you know i've been watching a lot of uh, documentaries because you know there's nothing really going on so uh not that i'm not busy but you know there's nothing you know to watch on tv there's no sports so like i watch documentaries and there's a huge divide right now in terms of uh, money from it's very top heavy and that's why a lot of like i'm not political in any sort of means but that's why a lot of democrats are trying to like get the government to pay you know other people money and having like the stipend and stuff like that and it's like well like that doesn't really help anybody in fact like it hurts the people that are actual business owners because now they have to pay more taxes and just to support you that's not doing anything i mean it's just a whole unraveling of a huge mess yeah, but on the let's say so I'm gonna I'm gonna be the opposition to that. Um, so we bail out uh, the banks that we already did, right? We 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 bailed them out once. Uh, we've done it again uh, with taxpayer money, right? Yeah. You you stay you stay solvent as a, as a business. We get nothing, right? We get nothing. We don't we don't right. get we we're not we're not getting we're not profit sharing. You're using our money. We're not right. getting we're not getting any of the profits of that. You're not kicking any us back us back anything and we're the ones that you know have to have to bail you out and you're the millionaires, right? How does that work? Yep. I mean, how is how does that make sense? Does it? No, it doesn't. I think mean, that's why everybody was so upset with it. I um, mean, you know, you saw it with like all their different movements and stuff and I, I forgot what it was that they had, but uh I remember, you know, back in the day that's what they had and we were trying to fight the bank and you know, it just 
they have more money than us, you know? And I think I was telling my buddy, you know, we really saw it, this whole COVID situation where like, you know, the top people got, you know, N95 masks and everybody else were left to defend for themselves or, yeah. you know, they had all the toilet paper or whatever it was, whatever supplies they needed. Like they had it and, you know, I didn't have that stuff. I don't know if you did, but I didn't have it. So like, you know, where's, where's the, uh, where's the help here, buddy? Like, you know, it's every man for himself unless you're at the top. Well, in the mortgage too. So ex- explain this one to me since you know a little bit something about it. So there's some of these companies out there right now that are saying, okay, well, we'll defer, we'll, we'll do the deferment for you for three months, right? You have a $2,000 mortgage. We'll go ahead and uh, put that off to, for three months for you. Well, at the end of that three months, you're going to owe the six plus the two for the fourth month. And if you don't have it, what happens? Well, then you have a choice to either declare bankruptcy or start like, you know, selling stuff or something, man. I mean, it's just such a bad situation, you know, all the way around. Even the SBA loan for like the $10,000, like I filled it out just to kind of see what they would do. Um, They haven't gotten me any money and it's been, you know, what has it been like two months now? Yeah. yeah. Um, You know, like, and then if you read like more about it, like it's free $10,000 for the first year. And then after that you get, I think it was like 32 percent, uh, 32. What oh, is it's a really high percentage. Oh, you get uh, hammered on the back end. Yeah. So like every single, you know, so it was like, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, borrow 10 grand from the U S government, but I had to pay back like $4,500 at the end of, you know, whatever. I think it's like a 30 year loan, but let's just say it goes out that long. I mean, man, it was like 4,500. That's like half of the money that you, that you borrowed. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Like you're, they're saying that they're trying to protect people, but really like it, they're just going to end up protecting themselves. Yeah. I mean, that's no different than some of these, uh, predatory, pred- predatory, uh, lending, uh, like, like, Paycheck lending uh, companies that you know they they deem uh, not not legal anymore, right? In some states, they they've run them out of out of the states for doing that. But here we have the government giving the same kind of shady ass loans, right? Yeah, it's just crazy all the way around. Like I, you know, I just shake my head because I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. But I know people that are doing it, and I'm like, okay, well, like you know, just like those people that were doing that equity lines of credit, like. The day will come and you will have to pay it back. So be ready, you know. Yeah. You so I guess plans for that. So I guess you're just a victim of your own stupidity. If you, if you, you know what I mean. It's like, all right, well, you didn't have to drink the water. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know we're all consumers and we okay. all like fancy stuff and we look at Instagram and before you know it, you're buying like some really nice stuff and <laughs> before you know it, like you're broke. Before we. And you're just like me and my newly leased BMW broke, you know, living out of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. How cool would that be, right? Like, hey, you want it, you want me to show you some houses? Cool. Hang on a second. Like, let me pull back the shower curtain in my BMW <laughs> so I can, like, you know, show you some properties. Let me quick change, you know, yeah, yeah. to my really hey, nice don't look, suit. Hey, don't look. I got I to gotta, I gotta change my underwear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to change it in my suit. Hang on a second. Let me, let me pull the curtain back. You know, like, uh, that's funny. Come on, man. It's crazy. It's a yeah. crazy life, right? Got to play the part. Yeah, I guess so, man. Well, I mean, I, we'll see. Only time will tell, man. Who knows how this whole thing's going to shake out? I, I at least I know that I have a home. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that I can just you know drive off into the sunset and, and hide in the hills somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a cool thing about it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's got it's got solar, so you know, nice. what, what are you going to do? Yeah, just park next to a Starbucks should be good. Right, you know, I'll probably have better, better, in, yeah, better internet than I got here right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about doing that the other day. I was like, well, 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 if I was in a pinch, what, what would I do? I mean, would I just like jump in my truck and just move the studio into there and go sit in my truck on the outside of a Starbucks and and do my interviews all day long? And I'll at least I have air conditioning, right? <laughs> Yeah, I found this, like, old-looking trailer thing. I mean, it was, like, uh, man, this thing was, like, from the 40s or 50s. I mean, it was, like, terrible. It looked like an old lunchbox. And I was like, man, all I'm going to do is, like, cut a hole in it, put a plug-in air conditioner, and I'm going to, like, just roll it over to, like, a Starbucks and just sit in their lot and, like, pick up their Wi-Fi. And hopefully, like, you know, just go pick up some food whenever I need it and, like, you know, use their bathroom as needed, and I'll be straight for a while, you know? Yeah. Be great. <laughs> 
<laughs> no rent, you know, nobody to bother me. It'd be fantastic. Yeah, well, I have to pay rent here. Uh, it's not bad, though. I mean, I have a great view. Uh, the water is just right there. We got kite boarders nice. and windsurfers right two miles down the road in a beach, and I can launch my jet skis down there and live in the life, man. Oh, cool. <laughs> Living, yeah, the, living like some jet skis. Yeah, yeah, jet skis are fun. Especially if you can get yeah. a lady on the back with you. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can dump her off. <laughs> 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 All right, brother. Uh, we, we we're about uh, fifty minutes right now. Uh, cool. you can go ahead and plug all your places, spaces. Let everybody know where they can find you uh, and your business. Yeah, sure. Uh, Christy Bentley on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, I don't do Snapchat, but I'm on it. Uh, what else? In my Twitter, same thing, Christy Bentley. D is in danger. Um, same as the website, ChristyBentley.com. And, of course, my company is BentleyFlightProperties.com and then ParkerPrescott.com for the capital management. Um, I have four ebooks out, so if any of the listeners want to message me, I'd be more than happy to hook you up with one or all of them as just a bonus. Uh, just mention the podcast, and I'll do that for you. Yeah, and you can also, uh, you know, send me uh, send me all the links that you want uh, in an email and a and a picture of yourself. That way, I can do it for the promotional uh, art. And then uh, all those links, whatever it is that you want to appear in the show notes for people to be able to uh, uh, reach you at, um, you know, just go ahead and uh, send me the email for that and i'll make sure that that makes it in into the show notes okay awesome yeah i'll do that all right cool man well i appreciate your time uh chris and have a good weekend and a uh, happy friday man you do the same thank you thanks for having me all right brother all right bye-bye Bye. you've been listening to the nowhere to go but up podcast sean is a single dad a union blue collar guy and he spent time in federal and state prison for drug trafficking and fraud when he was released from prison in 2006 all he had was the clothes on his back a bag of mail and some paperwork since then he's turned his life around and shares the struggles and successes on this podcast we hope you enjoyed the show and we hope you were moved to connect to the show book a guest spot for merch patreon paypal and social media links go to linktr.ee slash nowhere to go but up on instagram at nowhere to go but up now on twitter at but up now on the youtube channel at nowhere to go but up podcast see you next time